How will the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 powered OnePlus 15, Red Magic 11 Pro and iQ15 stack up against the Dimensity 9500 powered Vivo X300 Pro and Oppo Find X9 Pro in five different benchmark tests where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates at the time of making this video. All five devices are running on TSMC's N3P 3 nanometer process node, and none of their CPUs have efficiency cores. But the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, found inside the OnePlus Red Magic and iQ, brings their max clock speeds up to 4.61 GHz, while the Dimensity 9500, found inside the Vivo and Oppo, sits at 4.21 GHz, so their clock speeds are a lot closer this year. The Oppo sticks to LPDDR5X RAM, the Vivo and iQ get LPDDR5X Ultra, the OnePlus gets Ultra Plus, and the Red Magic gets LPDDR5T RAM. The Red Magic is the only one with UFS 4.1 Pro storage, while the rest stick to standard UFS 4.1. The Oppo, Vivo and OnePlus have 120Hz LTPO displays, but the OnePlus can hit 165Hz, just not in the LTPO range. The iQ has a 144Hz LTPO display, and the Red Magic has a dynamic 144Hz refresh rate. They've all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the Red Magic taking things a step further, thanks to its physical cooling fan and liquid cooling system, which I've set to fast speeds. I've also disabled the Red Magic's and iQ's RGB lighting effects. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 11. Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 3D Mark Solar Bay, and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Light. And in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes, which one of the two most powerful Android chipsets will come out on top in terms of performance, efficiency, and heat management. This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're going to be checking their battery percentage at the start. We'll compare this at the end once they finish running through all the benchmarks. We'll also be using an emissivity level of 0.5 with an infrared heat gun. We'll be testing them out now as well as in between each benchmark and of course at the end as well. They've all been sitting idle for a while now, so if you're interested to see their idle temps, the Red Magic is actually the hottest and the Oppo is the coolest. The first benchmark we'll be running is Antutu version 11. And Tutu pretty much tests everything. CPU processing, GPU power with a base test and a demanding test, memory testing and user experience testing, including image processing and video rendering. Version 11 isn't drastically different from version 10, but testing segments have been adjusted to better reflect modern smartphone capabilities, with more of an emphasis on AI, ray tracing performance and user experience enhancements to better reflect real world use cases such as scrolling and app loading. The scoring algorithm has also changed, so expect to see a jump in overall scores and you can't compare version 11 scores to version 10. Both of these flagship chipsets have seriously improved over the last generation. They're both now running on TSMC's third gen N3P process nodes, so there will be a noticeable jump in performance and efficiency. They're both still octa cores, but of course clock speeds have increased across the board. The Snapdragon chip sees a 20% CPU performance increase with 35% improved efficiency, and its Adreno 840 GPU sees a 23% performance boost, 25% increase in ray tracing, and it's 20% more efficient. The Dimensity chip is on its third gen all big core design, which boasts a 32% higher single core and 17% higher multi-core performance, with 55% more efficiency on its main core and 30% more efficiency while multitasking. Its ARM Mali G1 Ultra GPU offers a 33% performance bump, 112% increase in ray tracing, and it's 42% more efficient. Of course, the OnePlus Red Magic and iQ are running the Qualcomm chip and the Vivo and Oppo are running the MediaTek chip. And while all these new improvements and specs are great, it'll be interesting to see how well each brand has implemented and optimized the new chipsets, especially with so much power in such compact packages. And with so much power, heat management is crucial, which leads us to temperatures after Antutu. And even with a physical cooling fan and liquid cooling, the Red Magic isn't the coolest, but it isn't the hottest either, even though it's probably working the hardest. The rest of them all still have very capable vapor chamber cooling systems and after Antutu, the Vivo actually landed up the coolest and gained the least temp, 
while the OnePlus ended the hottest and it's quite a bit hotter than the rest. It also seems to gain the most temp. Next up, we have Geekbench 6, which mainly focuses on single and multi-core CPU speeds. Multi-core performance in Geekbench is now tested by one workload used with all cores working together on that shared objective, instead of multiple individual tasks. I'm expecting the Snapdragon phones to pull ahead here due to their higher clock speeds, but the Dimensity phones should perform well thanks to having a single supercomputing performance core and three prime cores followed by four performance cores, as opposed to the Snapdragon's two prime cores and six performance cores. It's completely normal for temps to drop off the Geekbench as it's not as long or as demanding as Antutu, and it doesn't seem like any of them dropped by too much, so I doubt any of them throttled. The OnePlus is still the hottest, but it's dropped by the most. The Vivo dropped by the least, but now the Oppo is the coolest. Our last three benchmark tests are within 3 Mark, and since each test is just one minute long, we'll record temps after all three tests. The first test, Wildlife Extreme, is a mobile bench rendered at 4K. Then we'll jump into Solar Bay, which is a ray tracing benchmark for high-end mobiles and lightweight laptops, where I'm expecting the Dimensity 9500 chips to pull ahead due to their larger boost in ray tracing performance. And then lastly, we'll run Steel Nomad Lite, which is a non-ray traced benchmark rendered at 1440p resolution and is intended for high-end mobiles and lightweight PCs. I'm expecting the Dimensity run Vivo and Oppo to perform slightly better than the Snapdragon Run OnePlus Red Magic and IQ here, as the Dimensity's integrated ARM Mali G1 Ultra MC12 GPU runs at a higher frequency of 1.716 GHz, as opposed to the Adreno 840 GPU seen in the Snapdragon phones, which runs at 1.2 GHz. The G1 Ultra also uses 12 cores as opposed to the Adreno's 3 slice design, so it should run a bit cooler due to a larger spread design. Though to be honest, after running some games on all these phones in my full review, you. Be sure to check them out after this and don't forget to subscribe if you've yet to do so already. They all offer identical performance, but I did notice the Dimensity powered phones kept cooler over a longer gaming session. After all three 3D Mark tests, the Oppo was once again the coolest and the Vivo gained the most temp. The OnePlus once again gained the least, but this time the Red Magic ended off the hottest. And overall temps from start to finish of course had the Red Magic end off the hottest, but it didn't gain the most temp. The Vivo did. The Oppo on the other hand ended off the coolest and gained the least temp, but honestly they were all pretty similar. You need to remember that all of these phones have cooling systems designed to exhaust heat away from them, so while they might be hot in the hand, their internal components are kept cool which is what's most important. And when it comes to battery life, unlike my recent battery test of these phones, the iQ was the most efficient and the Red Magic was the least. But that's because this video is all about running them at their max performance, with high loads and their high performance modes enabled. You also need to remember that we were running the Red Magic's physical fan and liquid cooling pump at their max speeds, which will certainly improve performance, but it'll negatively impact battery efficiency. Yes, the Vivo drained by the most percent here, but it has a much smaller battery than the Red Magic, so naturally the Red Magic ended with the worst milliamp hour per minute reading. But since the Red Magic worked the hardest, it ended off placing first in Antutu with a score over 4 million which is just bonkers. However, the iQ drained the least battery with the best efficiency and still managed to play second with a score not far off first place. The OnePlus wasn't far off either, leaving the Dimensity Run Vivo and Oppo in fourth and fifth place respectively. When it comes to Geekbench single core scores, the Vivo and Oppo still placed fourth and fifth, but their scores weren't far off the rest. The iQ now dropped to third, with the OnePlus taking second spot, and the Red Magic retained its lead. Placements were exactly the same when it comes to multi-core scores, but this time the Oppo was quite a bit lower than the Vivo, and the Red Magic scored quite a lot higher than everything else. I was expecting the Vivo and Oppo to perform better in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, and they did, reaching second and third place respectively, but I was not expecting the Red Magic to place first here, with a commanding lead over the iQ and OnePlus, which came last. I guess the Red Magic's dedicated gaming chipset might have made a pretty big difference here. But when it comes to Solar Bay, the ray tracing hardware found in the Dimensity driven Vivo and Oppo put them in first and second place, pushing the Red Magic down to third. But honestly, the Red Magic score was very, very close. The iQ and OnePlus were very far off and landed once again in 4th and 5th. It was a similar case with Steel Nomad Lite, but this time the Oppo placed first. 
ahead of the Vivo in second, but again the Red Magic wasn't far off in terms of score and the IQ and OnePlus were again quite far off. After averaging their placements with Geekbench split into two, the Red Magic 11 Pro placed first overall, the Vivo came in second, then the IQ, then the Oppo and the OnePlus came last. But aside from the Red Magic, they were all really close. The new Snapdragon chip seems better for CPU tasks and the Dimensity for GPU. The Red Magic performed the best, but the Oppo kept the coolest and the IQ the most efficient. But to be honest, I reckon you'd be happy with any of these phones in terms of performance. I think your main deciding factors should be displays and cameras. As always, this is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.